questions. We don't know! But we've had to find out by the end of this presentation. Welcome to our show. We've decided to ask passers by what they, you know, if they think they know what this is. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, a passer by! Look! Excuse me, Thank you, sir. Yes? Um, what is enthalpy? I have no idea. Let's try this house. Okay. Hello. Excuse me. Hello. Hello. We were just wondering. Hello. Do you know what an exothermic reaction is? Exo what? An exothermic reaction. time. Do you have any biscuits? So that lady was not particularly helpful. So we're gonna try again. Continuing our search. Here's another passerby. <laughs> we were just wondering, <laughs> do you know what? <laughs> interviewing hasn't been very fruitful, we've gone for the help of an expert. Let's see if they're in. Hello. Hello. Can we come in? Yeah, come in. Great. So, we hear you're an expert on enthalpy change and exothermic and endothermic reactions. Yep. Wow. wow. Well, we were wondering if we could ask you a few questions about yeah, them. Yeah, sure. By chance, I'm doing my teeth right now. And that is an example of an endothermic reaction. Oh, wow. How come? Right. Have you noticed when the mint is in your mouth, it is a cooling effect? And that is a, when, you're, when the toothpaste reacts with your saliva and um, it absorbs energy, making it feel cooler. Oh, wow. That's why I get that refreshing coolness when I brush my pearly whites. Fantastic. Well, let's have an interview then. So. Can you define enthalpy change? It's the heat energy transferred in a reaction at constant pressure. It's measured in kilojoules per mole. Ah, that's very interesting. A lot more than we got out of our lady with the biscuits. Anyway, um, so how about endothermic and exothermic reactions? An exothermic reaction is a reaction that gives out energy. Um. The enthalpy change is negative. Whereas an endothermic reaction is a reaction that absorbs energy, where the enthalpy change is positive. Ah. So, can we see any experiments? Yeah, sure. Come over here. The first reaction I'm going to show you is a exothermic reaction, which is an example of the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, this. So we've added some hydrogen peroxide into this bottle with some washing up liquid. And also, we're going to add some yeast, which has just been in some warm water. And then, the yeast is a catalyst. And the catalyst speeds up the decomposition, which causes lots of um, oxygen gas to be released, causing, hopefully, something fun to happen. Let's add some spice. Commonly known as the elephant's toothpaste. Yeah, you can see the shape of the toothpaste stuff coming out the top. But this is just foam with oxygen gas bubbles caused by the reaction. Is it safe to touch it? Yeah, it's fine. It's only washing up liquid. Kids, you probably shouldn't do this at home anyway. Peroxide is a highly corrosive um, thing. I'm gonna squeeze it now. Whoa, look at it go! <laughs> Oh, getting your hands dirty. Should I show you, show you the science bit of this experiment? Oh, yes please. I'm having so much fun. This is the chemical reaction. So the H2O2 hydrogen peroxide decomposes to H2O and O2. And this O2 gas is the thing that causes the foam to be bubbly. The enthalpy change in this reaction is negative 98. This makes it an exothermic reaction. Tell you what, if you don't believe it's exothermic, it's actually pretty warm. Which is something that I don't think I would have thought would have happened from a bit of foam washing up liquid. Cool. So, do you have any examples of a simple exothermic reaction? 
Well, when you strike a match, uh, light and heat energy are given off. Uh, so it is a exothermic reaction. That's great. And one you can try at home. With parents. With parental supervision, of course. Right, so we've covered exothermic reactions. Do we have any endothermic reactions today? Well, there's one that happens like in everyday life all the time, and that's photosynthesis. So the plant takes in light energy, so it absorbs the energy for the endothermic reaction, and then produces, and, and so it can turn carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and glucose. Wow, I did not even know that. There's also another example of an endothermic reaction that I'm sure you all did when you were little kids. And that is the reaction of vinegar and bicarbonate of soda. So you put in some bicarbonate of soda. It's got red food colouring in here to make it look like a volcano. And then add some vinegar. Give it a quick mix. Perfect. And then add some vinegar. a little more vigorous than we were expecting, but... So the carbon dioxide given off when the acid and the alkaline um, mixed, yeah, and if you can feel, the temperature there is dropping rapidly. That is. You'd be able to tell better with a temperature probe, but we don't have one here. Bit of a letdown. I thought this was a top secret lab, jeez. So here is the equation for the vinegar and sodium bicarbonate reaction. We have ethanoic acid, vinegar, and sodium hydrocarbonate, which is the sodium bicarbonate, and they react together to make water, carbon dioxide, and sodium ethanoate. And it is overall a endothermic reaction because there is a positive enthalpy change. So, thanks to our scientists, we've learned those today. We know that enthalpy is the energy transferred in a reaction. We know that an endothermic reaction takes in energy, and an exothermic reaction gives out energy. Science at its best.